No way. Let's go. That's right. After months of grinding, I'd finally beaten a radical red Nuzlocke. So what's left? How can I make this game harder? Why not randomize movesets on top of abilities? Good Pokemon could become bad, bad ones could be good, but do I have what it takes to be crowned champion yet again? Let's find out. This time our starter options end up being Seedra, Manaphy, and Seraledge. Even though I love the ghostly samurai, with random movesets I had to take Manaphy. And good thing I did since Clyde here rolled the ability Moxie. After taking care of our rival Seedra, it was time for our first batch of encounters. In Viridian City, we catch Sentret, who immediately evolves at our level cap of 16. On Route 1, I took a risk going for Barrage after trying about 30 Pokeballs and kill Clefable. We then pick up Blood Moon Ursa Luna, Orthworm, Dartrix, Cacturn, Honchkrow, and Tinkaton before it's time to take on Brock. Ray is our lead with high horsepower, which brings Alolan Geodude down to sturdy as it self-destructs. Against Onix, I swap to Albi, who can take Rock Tomb plus Bulldoze and land an analytic boosted drum beating to bring the snake down to 1 HP. Thanks to the speed drop, we're now faster and can finish Onix with one more drum solo. Our arch answer is Tinkaton with Thunder Punch, which one-shots after tanking Pluck on the switch in. Last is Varum, whose Bulldoze hits Kronk, but it just takes one fiery dance for us to claim the Boulder Badge. For our next batch of encounters, we hatch... Great. We also catch Ninjask, Venomoth, and buy a shiny Superior with Fur Coat. Unfortunately for Vanessa, I had to sack her to a plus one Fire Fang from Archer's Miniana. Sorry, Venomoth fans. I then thought Albi could finish the Dark type with Jawlock, but he came up just short and paid the ultimate price. Manaphy was able to finish this battle, so let's move on to Cerulean, where we have another underwhelming hatch, Giraffarig. Unless we randomly roll Twin Beam in the moveset, this thing will never evolve. On the two routes above the city, I add Lillipup and Runerigus to the squad. Typically, this would be the point in the run that we fight Bugsy for the U-Turn TM. However, I decided that using TMs defeats the purpose of this challenge, so they'll all be banned. After cobbling together my best team for Misty, it was time to take on the second gym leader. Hence starts things off with a big thunder punch as Frogadier Rock Tombs for almost no damage. Thanks to Fur Coat, we can tank Ice Punch, and even though High Horsepower isn't strong enough to secure the knockout, Shadow Sneak makes sure we don't need to take another hit. Clyde now comes in as Starmie fires off Aurora Beam, and as we go for Aerial Ace, Misty swaps to Floatzel. Manaphy is holding a Rindo Berry, so Hidden Power Grass doesn't do too much as we bring the Weasel down to about 30% with Psychic Fangs. I get red a little this turn as Floatzel flip turns to Starmie, who can easily eat my Psychic Chompers. Ray switches in to nullify Psyshock, and as her Yachi Berry protects her from Aurora Beam, a no guard Supercell Slam means we have no risk of missing and taking crash damage. With Claude Sire out, I go to Kronk on Rock Tomb, then Psybeam for a little less than half, but get the confusion. I fiery dance to plus two special attack as the Paldean recovers, and eventually knock it out with a pair of Psybeams. With only Floatzel left, I pivot through Manaphy on Water Pulse to Pinky on HP Grass. After tanking Flip Turn, it just takes one Thunder Punch in order to win the Cascade Badge. Also at our new level cap of 34, Bitmo the Lillipup can evolve directly into Stoutland. Next to join the team is Electric Surge Lugia, who I managed to catch in a Great Ball, Chikorita, who can already evolve into Meganium, Storm Drain Keldeo, who is our Fossil Revival in Vermilion, Flamigo, Bisharp, and Sinistee, who evolves into Poltegeist. After a quick rendezvous with Brendan on the SSN, we can take on the biggest early game hurdle, Lieutenant Surge. Quiet Sword of Ruin plus Power Whip can decimate Pink Urchin after it sets up Electric Terrain. As the Ace Mega Manectric Flame Bursts our Steel type, I set up Wish, then swap to Ursaluna on Charge Beam. Hidden Power Grass does just under 50% to our bear, who unfortunately rolled Bone Rush as its only ground type move, hitting twice for not enough damage. We tank one more and bad RNG puts us in a sticky situation as Kronk two shots again. I'm forced to go to Meganium to eat the next, then the electric dog Volt switches, so instead of a kill our bouncy bubble chips Vicavolt. Our dino truly has some great moves, including Parting Shot, which lowers the opponent's attack stats and allows us to pivot to Giroux on a weakened Volt switch. 
We now bait Thunder Punch into Runericus, but have to play the RNG game again as the only ground type move our tablet has is Magnitude. 7 is just not enough to drop Palmot, but thanks to a health Yachi Berry, we can finish the Pikachu knockoff next turn with Aquafang. Belly Bolt is super annoying with Thunder Wave and Parabolic Charge, along with its Electromorphosis ability, but eventually is done in by Kronk's Bone Rush. The team is looking pretty battered as Vikavolt returns, so I decide we need to sack Giroud to reset tempo. Quiet comes up huge here, landing a lovely kiss, then firing off a Glacial Lance for big damage. I get greedy and wish, but tragedy strikes as the Stag Beetle wakes up and Volt switches our Steely Boy to his grave. From here, Meganium is able to clean the fight up with a pair of bouncy bubbles, but not being able to eventually get King Gambit definitely hurts. At the new cap of 44, I evolve Jet, opting for regular Decidueye and receiving a huge payoff, literally. The stretch to Celadon City is the most encounter-heavy portion of the run, so bear with me for a second. I pick up Bullrush Tentacruel, Roselia, who I evolved off screen, fail a Zerkatry encounter, and backtrack to Route 21, where I fish up a Terrakian. I also scoop up Sevi Dodrio, Magnemite, Competitive Rapidash, Deden, Dewat, and hatch Swadloon, Spritzy, and Komo O with Valiant Shield. When it comes to evolutions, I decided to go with Hisui and Samurott, and will be keeping Tim as a Magneton since it has Feline Prowess, doubling its special attack stat. With all of that out of the way, we can finally take on Erika. Ninjask rolled an incredible move in Obstruct, which we used turn 1 to lower Rillaboom's defense by 2 stages. Then we Aerial Ace for the knockout as the only Mon that's faster than me comes in, Hisui and Electrode. Tinkaton stands up pretty nicely to this thing, and after surviving Thunderbolt plus Chloroblast, Pinky gets the KO with X-Scissor. Meganium's Grassy Seed gives it boosted defense, and even though Hidden Power Fire does solid damage to Rose Raid, we Baneful Bunker for terrain recovery before Tachyon Cutter chips Venusaur on a switch in. Lugia is very specially bulky, but unfortunately gets poisoned by Sludge Bomb Frame 1. A lackluster moveset means Peck is our best option into the Mega, who hits again with the Toxic Ball. Decidueye is here to finish Venusaur, taking another Sludge Bomb before connecting Pyro Ball for the kill. Orthworm can shake off Meowskarada's Triple Axle, and without an item, Knockoff doesn't do much, so we can set up Curse. Flower Trick is now the cat's best move against us, proccing Anger Shell to bring us to plus 2 attack on a massive Heat Crash, bringing the Paldean down to its Focus Sash. We have enough defense to live another Knockoff, then finish Meowskarada with our Fiery Pounce, leaving just Shiny Meganium. Gertrude has to take 2 HP fires here, but then can finish this battle with a pair of Tachyon Cutters to earn us the Rainbow Badge. Since Magneton has Feline Prowess, I decide it's a perfect candidate for the Eviolite, meaning we need to take on Whitney. Jet sweeps the normal type leader with a combination of Pyro Balls and Population Bombs, thanks to his held wide lens, making this battle trivial. After hatching a Mana and Rocket Hideout, it's time to take on Giovanni for the first time. Manaphy is my best answer for his lead Nido King, trading a Psychic Fangs with Thunderbolt, but before we can pick up our first KO, Kangaskhan is swapped in. I can now pivot through Jet on a fake out to Como O on Crunch, negating her Valiant Shield boost with a defense drop. Body Slam then paralyzes Bailey, but thankfully she breaks through to blow the ace back with a wide lens accuracy boosted high jump kick. Falooza fails a Psycho Cut as Shogun swaps in, then after our first Sucker Punch, the Crime Boss switches out to Orthworm. Shedtail is a huge threat here as I go to Decidueye, baiting Infernape with its held Focus Sash. Koma O then 4 times resists Pyro Ball, and since the Ape doesn't see a kill, it Swords Dances as Population Bomb destroys the sub and brings it down to 30%. Tentacruel can then tank close combat, and thanks to its Bull Rush ability, its speed is doubled the first turn it's on the field, leading to an easy Aqua Tail knockout. Tablets of Ruin Aromatisse is our Honchcrow answer, swapping in for free on Sucker Punch. The Crit Machine does around a third with Drill Peck, but Parfum can survive two to outlast the bird with a pair of overdrives. Orthworm no longer has the HP required to Shed Tail, so I can go back to Jet on an Iron Head and drop the Worm plus Needle King with Pyro Balls before Samurott finishes the battle with a Sucker Punch. Before taking on one of the toughest battles in the game, we hatch a Skorupi, beat our rival in Silphco, and are handed a Coffin. We're now thrown into a tag battle with Brendan as our partner against Rocket Admin's Archer and Ariana. 
My lead for this fight is Contrary Haunch Crow, netting an attack boost from Incineroar's Intimidate. Turn 1, we're faked out as Masquerade bug buzzes Gothitelle, and it doubles into Geo with Hidden Power Fighting. We then use the spread Fiery Wrath to kill the Psychic type through its Culberberry and give Masquerade a roll at killing Incin. We miss the high roll, but a timely flinch means we can survive Mega Houndoom's Heat Wave and drop both Dark Fire types with Flying Press plus Bug Buzz. Tim is now the switch into Golden Go's Make It Rain, and our partner does enough to pre Marina with Giga Drain to live through the incoming Psychic. Shadow Ball brings Masquerade low as our own just misses the KO on the Ghost type. Before going down to Hyper Voice, Brendan's lead Giga Drains the Water Starter one last time to bring it to about 25% of its health. With Mega Sceptile having a 4 times resistance, I don't mind clicking Parabolic Charge this turn. Once the Grass Dragon KOs Primarina, Golden Go can only throw out a pathetic Make It Rain before we drop it and suck up some HP. Last is Mega Mawile, but being as slow as it is, we can double down with Sceptile to drop the Menace before it even gets the chance to attack. Next is another run-in with Giovanni, this time rocking a Sand Team. He leads to Powdon, who drops to a single Grab Apple from Jet. For some reason, Kangaskhan goes for Fake Out into Decidueye, but we switched to Bailey regardless. The Mega swaps out as our high jump kick brings Garchomp down to half health, then Meganium swaps in as the Land Shark Swords dances. Sandvale comes up big for the pseudo legendary, enabling a strange steam dodge after Rock Slide. With one more chance, we see a switch back to Kangaskhan to tank the fairy type move. We go back to the normal Slayer Bailey, who tanks Fake Out plus Body Slam to finally drop her target. With the Sandstorm over and Coma obeying Scale Shot from Garchomp, we get a free switch to Debo. Strange Steam can finally take the kill after an Earthquake, then Snow Warning Keldeo comes in and has its air balloon popped by Excadrill's Iron Head. Keldeo only rolled one good move, which luckily was Torch Song, using two to knock the mole out after an Earthquake. Jet can then take care of Garganagle with Grab Apple, but since he got Salt Cured, I bring Pence in to tank Head Smash plus Woodhammer and win this battle with two overheats. Typically, my strategy for Sabrina revolves around leading Mons that can one-shot both her leads as well as her Mega Gardevoir and taunt Porygon 2 to deny Trick Room from going up. However, as I'm not using TMs or Move Tutors in this run, I couldn't exactly stick to that script. After knocking out the leads, we actually end up seeing Gardevoir and Ursa Luna instead of the guaranteed Trick Room setter. Grab Apple KOs Gardevoir before it can do anything, and Ursa Luna protects to proc its Flame Orb, getting Guts online. Porygon 2 tracing huge power doesn't matter since the virtual Pokemon only has special attacks. Grab Apple shuts the bear down while we go for a Fiery Wrath flinch to no avail, leading to dimensions being twisted. Ray returns to the team, but has her Iron Ball knocked off as Pinky is Ice Beamed. I'm forced to make another switch, this time going to Drapion as Tinkaton is hit by close combat and just can't get the kill on Brute Bonnet with X Scissor. I maneuver Meganium into a Thunderbolt while Quinn finishes the real threat with Sky Uppercut. We then have no trouble winning this 2v1, earning a Deathless Marsh Badge. After working my way through the Sand Route and catching a Sevi Noibat, Tragedy Strikes. Against Birdkeeper Jacob, Cramorant gets a crit surf against Magneton, and because it was at 1 HP, I couldn't recover enough to live through the dumb bird's gulp missile. So much for feline prowess. Things get worse from here as I risk a randomized Deden trade, ending up with Volby. Time for the next set of encounters. First up is Shinx on Route 18, eventually becoming Luxray with Water Absorb and Sword of Ruin. I also grab Quillfish, Brion, Celebi, and in an unreal twist after catching Helioptile, Feline Prowess returns to us in the form of Heliolisk. From here, it's a quick run-in with Brendan, then Deathless rematches against Brock, Misty, and Surge before we can finally take on Koga. Thanks to Bullrush, Flo takes an easy turn 1 KO with Diamond Storm. Iron Valiant's booster energy makes it insanely fast, but Celebi's Valiant Shield plus Culberberry basically negate knockoff. After close combat, we can Nature's Madness for 50%, but as we Blaze Kick for the kill, Koga swaps Greninja in, getting a clutch burn. Keldeo is our answer for the starter, tanking Dark Pulse, but as our unnicknamed mythical fires off Zippy Zap, we see a switch to Drapion. 
Funny enough, my best option to deal with the Scorpion is a mirror match, tanking 3 wicked blows to barely eke out the win with 2,000 arrows. Celebi's next Nature's Madness brings Greninja low for a Keldeo finish, then Rapidash can survive Boom Burst with a Chillin' Berry and outspeed to drop Koga's Ace with Headlong Rush. Sevi Noivern is kind of a monster, eating anything Excelgore wants to throw at him and picking up a knockout with some Shadow Punches. Left with only the injured Iron Valiant, Kate comes back to sponge up some hits and earn us the Soul Badge with Nature's Madness plus Blaze Kick. With the ability to surf, we can scoop up Iron Bundle, Reuniclus, Blastoise, Galarian, Zapdos, and for the first time ever, I fish up a full-odd shiny Blaziken. Battling through Price's Snow Team nets us the Choice Scarf, which will be extremely useful going forward. On our way into the Pokemon Mansion, we're ambushed by Mei, who's looking to test our strength after speaking with Brendan. Her Mega Blaziken can cause a lot of issues with speed boost, but thanks to Price's Scarf, Skelly can drop the Fire Chicken with Vicious Rend. The rest of her team is easily dispatched, then after picking up an Audino in the mansion and working through Blaine's gym trainers with Sun teams, we can face off against the 7th leader. Shogun kicks things off with Sucker Punch as an Aura Sphere activates Ripen to bring the Otter back to 170 HP. Our next is nullified by a switch to Slitherwing, who's completely walled by Shuttle, who just so happened to roll Oblivion Wing. Although Mega Charizard Y crits an Air Slash, Flo can always secure a kill thanks to Bull Rush Diamond Storm. Thanks to the defense boost, Executor doesn't have a Psy Shock kill, so I pivot through Snow Worn and Keldeo as the plant growths, resulting in big damage to the incoming Jet. Thankfully, our bird outspeeds for a Pyro Ball kill, then swaps to Blaziken as Ogre Pond hits the not very effective knockoff. Ivy Cudgel scores a crit, but thanks to Sharpness plus Bitter Blade, Deacon recovers a big chunk of health. The Legendary then U-turns to Typhlosion, having its Blazing Soul broken thanks to our next Fiery Slash. The Offender tries to Focus Blast as Caldeo returns, then a Loaded Dice Rock Blast hits four times to secure the kill. I take a risk here, unfortunately rolling 4 instead of 5 hits, so our Sword of Justice needs to hope Psyshock doesn't crit before finishing Armor Rouge. All that's left now is Ogre Pond, who Samurai can easily take care of with Sucker Punch, netting us the Volcano Badge. Our last two encounters before the final gym are Aracuda and Beldum. I also take this opportunity to beat down Jasmine Steel types for the Assault Vest. I actually couldn't find a safe line to beat Chuck's team, so we'll be taking on the Radical Red Endgame without the ever-powerful Focus Sash. Cerulean Cave is a true terror in this game, ending runs even for the most prepared challengers. The first obstacle is a back-to-back -back battle without a chance to change your team or heal, starting with Rocket Admin Archer. Jet kicks us off with an 8-spot Pop Bomb to take down Mamoswine. Ursaluna can then come in for free against Mimikyu, and after a Swords Dance, Bone Rush breaks Disguise and picks up a little extra damage with a second hit. A Play Rough Attack Drop won't stop Heavy Slam from two-shotting the Ghost, which then brings in a true demon, Houndoom. Luckily, Flamethrower doesn't burn Bailey on a switch, and she manages to avoid a Fiery Wrath flinch to kick the Hellhound back to where he came from. Lugia with Incinerate is then the answer to Durant, cleaning up fight number one and opening up our last showdown with Ariana. No surprise that another pop bomb from Decidueye drops the lead Hatterene, then Terrakian debuts to eat Heat Crash from Rhyperior. Outspeeding makes Ficious Wren strong enough to destroy the rock monster, bringing in Mawile. Deacon is my best bet to survive Play Rough with a 69% chance, and we score a good roll living on 2 HP. He then rips off a boosted Bitter Blade for the kill. Honchgirl is basically an auto crit, so I pivot through Lugia on Drill Peck to Kaiba on Night Slash to pick up the win with Supercell Slam. Now it's time for the run killer, the God Slayer, Giovanni 3. With randomized abilities, things could go extremely poorly as this is another tag battle, this time partnering up with Lance. The boss's Tapu Lele sets up Psychic Terrain to disable priority moves, not to mention he can gain weather control with Tyranitar and his Mewtwo Mega Evolves after being KO'd. After theory crafting for a few hours, I decide my best answers for this battle are Meganium, Lugia, and Como O. Imagine my feeling when the battle opens and I see that Lance's Dragapult rolled Slow Start. Run over, right? Wrong. Choice Scarf Competitive Meganium is about to go to work. 
At plus two attack, we can blow Scrafty back as Dragapult survives Moonblast and locks Lele in with Spirit Shackle. With our boost, we have enough power to finish the Island Guardian with another Strange Steam, then Excadrill Swords dances as it's the next prisoner our partner takes. As Mewtwo hits the field, it's time for the impenetrable Special Wall Lugia holding our Assault Vest. Not to mention Electric Surge pops to take some bite off the legendary Soul Robbery and Expanding Force. Aura Sphere now connects into Dialga, and even though Pangea didn't roll any high damaging moves, Skitter Smack's special attack drops will be immensely helpful against the Ace. Lance makes a great call out body pressing the plus 4 Excadrill to take it down before it does any damage. It's an unorthodox strategy to leave Mewtwo on the field, but at minus 1 I feel comfortable enough as two fighting type moves waste Tyranitar. Soul Robbery does virtually nothing to Lugia as a Fire Punch plus a timely Crit Flamethrower incinerates Celesteela. Now we're free to Skitter Smack till the cows come home, Dialga forcing Mega Evolution this turn with Dragon Pulse. Refusing to take the Lord of Time down, we shrug off one last Soul Robbery as we complete a flawless Geo 3 with Skitter Smack and Dragon Pulse plus a little chip from Sand. We're truly in the endgame now as we waltz into the Viridian Gym to take on Claire. Aerodactyl will automatically taunt if we have a status move in our set, leaving Rose Raid free to score a Tachyon Cut or Kill. Lugia is my best Magearna answer, but two Shift Gears could spell trouble as I Skitter Smack to reduce Floor Cannon's damage. After one Fire Punch, the Johto Leader swaps to Naganadel, but Nasty Plot frees Decidueye up for a Choice Scarf Thousand Arrows. Roaring Moon Dragon dances, but a held Babiri Berry keeps Meganium safe through Iron Head to drop the Paradox Mon with a 4 times effective Strange Steam. Purely out of disrespect, I brought on Dino to deal with Gouging Fire, Mega Evolving to survive Flare Blitz number 2 before endeavoring. Pangea then comes back on Earthquake to finish Entei's Ancestor with Wake Up Slap. Iron Bundle finally makes his debut, rolling Icy Wind in its moveset to take care of Dragonite while it helplessly Dragon Dances twice. Baiting Aura Sphere, we can go to Decidueye for free in order to earn our final Gym Badge with one last thousand arrows. Our rival stands in our way one last time before the Elite Four, but the more interesting battle is our final bout with Brendan. He leads Focus Sash Deoxys Speed, who e-speeds Lugia for some chip as we Skitter Smack. Our Fire Punch then meets the incoming Landorus for some chip before we swap to Carl on Rock Slide. We Mega Evolve on Earth Power next turn, then finish the Genie with Sparkling Aria. Luxray absolutely walls Jirachi, resulting in a free Bitter Blade against Galarian Zapdos. Sevi Noivern is unaffected by close combat, then Huntail drops our attack and shrugs off Ficious Rend. Thanks to Zippy's at priority, Bailey wastes the eel's white herb as it switches to Sceptile after shell smashing. Swords Dance keeps Uma's air balloon intact as Glacial Lance smacks Huntail. This dance continues until Brendan lets us finish the water dark type with Supercell Slam and Sceptile with Glacial Lance. Lionel drops Jirachi with a pair of bitter blades and finally Skelly cleans up with Vicious Rend plus Sucker Punch. Victory Road has 6 handcrafted battles, but honestly none of them give me too much trouble. Our final 2 encounters before taking on the Elite 4 are Pineco and Frigibax. So let's talk about the final team. Knowing I'm up against Lorelei's Rain team, Decidueye will obviously be instrumental. Oh, and I haven't even mentioned yet that it learned Shell Smash and Substitute. Speed Boost Back's Calibur will be his partner for this double battle, rolling Zippy Zap and Electro Shot to make it an absolute menace in the rain. The Pseudo also has a great moveset with Stealth Rock, Power Trip, and Swords Dance to sweep Agatha later on. Blastoise's randomized moveset really lends itself to support with moves like Parting Shot, Tailwind, Eerie Impulse, and Icy Wind to help control the pace of fights I can't sweep. Next up is Galarian Zapdos, who can hit Lance's Primal Dialga hard with Meteor Assault, Oblivion Wing offers Stab Recovery, and I can even use Dark Hole for Sleep Shenanigans if I need to. Feline Prowess Nora is here for big special damage with enough speed to take advantage of Dragon Energy if something goes down and I need a kill. Last and probably the most unexpected team member is Fortress. The combination of Bad Dreams and Lovely Kiss goes crazy against physical attackers, with First Impression for priority and Triple Axle to deal with some of Lance's threats. 
Not to mention, this was my only Pokemon that rolled Protect and Rapid Spin in its learn set. With that, let's take on Lorelei. The plan is to leave Politoed on the field as long as possible, connecting Zippy Zap and Grab Apple with a Held Choice Scar for a quick Ogre Pond KO. Iron Bundle gets the same treatment on the following turn as Politoed now decides to Scald Tundra. Primal Kyogre then hits the field, but Horn Leech plus our Newtonian Apple take it down as we yet again dodge a burn from the frog. A crit Horn Leech finishes Polly as Swampert is flattened by Grav Apple. Our dynamic duo then clean up a 2v1 against Walking Wake for an easy Lorelei win. Bruno's two teams are very similar, but his lead can either be Infernape or Great Tusk. Before the fight, we replace Jet's X-Scissor with Thousand Arrows and have to say goodbye to the OP Population Bomb in place of Substitute. Blastoise with a Mental Herb becomes a safe lead to Parting Shot immediately and let Decidueye do his thing. Infernip is stunlocked into Taunting as another Mental Herb pops to let a Shell Smash. Now faster than the monkey, we can set up a sub before Taunt finally sticks. Thousand Arrows then brings Infernape to Sash as it sets up some pointless rocks. At plus 2 attack with huge power, we finish my favorite starter and one-shot como o The sub was important to counter Urshifu's Sucker Punch, freeing Jet to kill with Grav Apple. Plus 2 speed makes us faster than Booster Energy Iron Valiant, then it just takes two more Thousand Arrows to drop Zacian and Lucario for the win. As mentioned before, Baxcalibur has Agatha's number. Our Mental Herb is taunted off as we Swords Dance, then thanks to Speed Boost we're faster than either Zoroark lead and can set up Stealth Rocks before being taunted again. Each stat boost makes Power Trip stronger, and even though the move is resisted, either lead has a Focus Sash, so we're forced to take some damage. From here, it's absolute decimation for Tundra, Power Tripping everything for kills, including Marshadow whose Sash is broken by the rocks we said earlier. So we've been through three fights and have only used three Pokemon. Who's the Lance Sweep? Surprise, there is none. Because of his Garchomp's roar and Dialga's roar of time switching Pokemon out, I truly think this battle is impossible to sweep without suction cups or soundproof. I decide to lead Fortress as we are in fact faced with the Land Shark. Earthquake hurts, but with a held wide lens, we connect Lovely Kiss to break the Focus Sash. My best play here is to cover for a swap by Lovely Kissing again, and it pays off by catching Dialga. The Primal Beast has Sleep Talk, so I predict no switch as Blastoise is met by Rest. After Mega Evolving and dropping the monster's special attack by two stages, it wakes up and Roar of Times us to Zapdos. Meteor Assault wouldn't be enough to kill, and on the off chance we aren't Roar of Timed, I don't want to recharge, so I opt for Trip Arrows instead, getting the defense drop. In another stroke of great RNG, Decidueye is brought in who can finish Diago with an Expert Belt boosted Thousand Arrows. The largest threat has been taken care of, but Lance still has plenty of Juggernauts including his Mega Salamence. Since the AI Calx moves before Mega Evolving, it doesn't see Air Elite, meaning it thinks Double Edge won't affect Decidueye. This means the Fighter Jet Dragon Dances, allowing me to Shell Smash. Plus 2 Special Attack makes Spring Tide Storm an 87.5% chance to kill, and at this point it's my only hope, thankfully not low rolling. Dragonite's Multiscale means I can't kill it, but with a guaranteed dual wing beat KO I can bring Blastoise in. The Pseudo will now Dragon Dance so we can Parting Shot for free and go to Baxcalibur. We tank dual wing beat and with a held Power Herb, Freeze Shock becomes a single turn move, ripping through this Dragon Flying type's Multiscale. Our Ice Dragon baits Double Iron Bash from Melmetal, and an unfortunate crit on the second hit means the move could be coming out again. My only out is Lovely Kiss, connecting into the Behemoth for a little chip. Shuttle's Meteor Assault is enough to finish the Metal Beast as Nora eats the ensuing Aero Blast from Iron Jugulus. A Held Choice Scarf makes us faster than the future Hydreigon, resulting in an easy discharge kill as the sleeping Garchomp is all that remains. Galarian Zap gets the honor of dropping the shark with Meteor Assault after it wastes its last turn alive setting up rocks. Somehow I came out of this RNG gauntlet deathless and now it's time to take on the champion. His lead Feromosa close combats Foratris and thanks to the defense drop Triple Axel is strong enough to kill. 
Now it's time to sack our unexpected hero to Eternatus' Meteor Beam, allowing Nora to blast it with a Choice Scarf Dragon Energy to kill. Zapdos is my switch into a Veltal, staying awake through Dark Hole but barely missing the range on Meteor Assault. At least we get the para, but Oblivion Wing finishes our bird and restores some health to the Destruction Pokemon. Baxcalibur's Power Herb Free Shock finishes a Veltal, but she doesn't have anything to deal with Metagross. Blastoise, however, holds up well against Meteor Mash. Unfortunately, Carl is flinched by Zen Headbutt before getting the chance to parting shot, so he pays the ultimate price. Decidueye then hangs on through Fire Punch, but Pyro Ball low rolls, meaning it's time to say goodbye to our best Mon. Nora wastes the Iron Leg Pokemon with Dragon Energy, as we're now face to face with Ditto. It's at this moment that I realize I'm forced to risk the entire run on a speed tie. Whoever lands the first Dragon Energy will win. And Nora absolutely comes up clutch. With the mirror match taken care of, one more blast rinses Maridon, beating Radical Red with randomized abilities and movesets. I've put so many hours into this game, and the randomization options make every run feel like a totally new challenge. I noticed that some moves appeared pretty frequently in the randomized learn sets, but coupling that with random abilities created a lot of variance. You could argue I was spoon-fed with huge power Decidueye and two feline prowess Pokemon, but I'd like to think I navigated the damage calculations in a way to make my other Pokemon shine. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more like it. If not for me, do it for the fact that Fortress is a radical red hall of famer. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.